Hello, I'm Illustrator Brandon McDonald, and welcome to a Corel Painter Essentials tutorial. This video covers the first half of this painting. I've sped it up because it took me a few hours to complete. I often start a digital painting by using photos from my sketchbook. My go-to brush for sketching and basically doing everything is the concept art Jitter Smooth. During the sketch phase, I like to play around a lot. Don't commit to the first thing you draw. Give yourself options. If you commit to the first thing you sketch without testing your visual options, you're going to be kicking yourself later in the process. Either because you're bored with the design, you want to change something, or you've already started polishing it. Push yourself to spend more time in the sketch phase, and your final product will be much better. Going back to the Concept Art Jitter Smooth brush, I love sketching with this brush because I'm not good at visualizing shapes with line work. I can see what I'm doing better if I can fill in the whole shape with a stroke. I often do line work around the shapes after the fact, if I feel it's necessary. My personal favorite outlining tool is the cover pencil. It's often good to stick to themes with your character, or whatever you're drawing. I'm talking about themes for shapes, colors, designs, etc. Having some sort of consistency can really help a piece. I mean, it depends, of course, but here I wanted him to have all or at least most of his metal to be sort of a copper color. And notice his robes. The bottom is a sort of swooping design, same as the top part. And the gem in his crown is circular, similar to the orb of his staff. Here I'm roughly painting in the general local colors of the character and his gear. Local color is just the base color of an object, or whatever you're painting. For example, the handle of his staff is brown. You're not accounting for any shading or lighting, or atmosphere colors or anything. It's just the color of the object. Still using the concept art jitter brush, I like to separate a character from a background at a certain point. You can do it this way or you can cut him out with a lasso tool. The way I'm doing it here actually makes the background above the character. No matter what brush you're using, it's very useful to learn how to resize your brush using hotkeys. Learn as many hotkeys as you can. The more hotkeys you know, the faster you'll be, so you won't have to dawdle around with going up to the brushes and going from pencil to eraser. You won't have to go to the top to resize your brush. Instead, you can just press a button and it's done. Now that I've got that black background above the foreground, I can paint him on the layers beneath without having to worry about painting outside that black boundary I've painted. I'm basically just giving him shape by shading him. I'm kind of trying to tackle ambient light, cast shadows, and a little bit of color all at the same time. I'm not being very brave here though, because I still don't know what I'm doing for this piece yet. Many seasoned artists will advise beginner artists to start in grayscale, then add color once they're happy with their work. I still often will work from grayscale, and so do many other professional artists. I'm just slowly giving the whole character form this guy has a very basic overhead light source, nothing fancy, so you can read the shapes very easily. A tip I have for beginners is if you're ever painting from reference, pay attention to the light source you have. Lighting can really, truly make or break a painting. I've seen beginners do paintings where the character or subject of the painting was lit from the front or from a weird angle. Basically, their reference wasn't a professionally taken photo and the paintings often turn out awful. Not because the artist is bad, but because the artist doesn't realize that their reference is bad. The lighting is bad. A common example of bad lighting is front lit portraits. Like if you take a selfie and you have the flash on and you're front lit, your facial features and the planes of your face are not going to read as well as if you have an overhead light source. I'm not saying it has to be an overhead light source, of course. There are definitely all kinds of lighting options that you can play with. I'm more just saying to be aware of it. I pretty much just periodically switch between the concept art jitter brush, the cover pencil, and the eraser tool through the entire process. Oh, and for large gradients, for example, big areas with smooth transitions from light to dark, I will almost always use an airbrush set to a large size. No matter what brush it is, I believe you should always use the largest brush possible for the job. It saves time, and it's easier for you to get the shape right with a larger brush. If you're using a teeny tiny brush, it's going to be harder for you to get that shape believable. 
The next two or three minutes is just pushing the darks and lights and making the shapes readable. Moving on to color, I'm using layers set to multiply for this. Multiply will darken your values, so be careful. If you just want to color something, use a color layer mode. And considering that I'm coloring using a separate layer, I don't really have to worry about getting my color exactly what I want. I can change it later. I'm always really finicky on colors. I can never decide on something. When I paint digitally, I'm constantly messing with the colors, and when I paint traditionally, I'm constantly disappointed in the colors I've chosen. Warm up the colors on his nose and ears. It helps to make your character look alive. Add a very subtle amount of red to your character's nose, maybe cheeks, ears, fingies, elbows, knees, and feet. If you don't do this, they may just end up looking like they're made out of plastic or something. Color variation is very important. Color gradients are also very important. The local color of a thing is almost always going to be affected by light and shadow. For example, the light will be warmer and the shadow will be cooler, or vice versa. gradient over him from light to dark, top to bottom, over the entire character. This helps to make his overhead lighting a little bit more realistic. Then of course there's rim lighting. It just helps to make your shapes seem a bit more believable. It also makes it more interesting to look at even though everyone does it. doing here, just experimenting with a grainy looking blunt chalk brush. I was trying to make a fun magic effect.
His hand looked like maybe it could have been doing some kind of magic, so I tried painting a glowing rune. I didn't like how much it pulled my eye from everything else. I wanted the focus to remain on his face. I suppose in hindsight I could have had some subtle transparent runes coming out of his hand so they don't pull your eye away from his face quite as much. Here I'm painting the background. I'll easily cut his shape out later, so I just paint the background right over the top of him. That's it for part one. If you enjoyed this, please continue on to part two.